have your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. Matthew 12 and verse 37. Are you there? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Do you know that on average we speak 7,000 words a day? 7,000 words a day. A day. That's a lot of talking. That's a lot of words. And by those words we're either justified or by those words we speak, we are condemned. Words can make us. Or words can break us. Words can heal us. Or our words can make us sick. Our words either can destroy us, our words can make us have life, peace, joy, health. The words you spoke yesterday is what you live today. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, very familiar passage of Scripture says, For verily I say unto you, so we see Jesus is talking to you, that whatsoever shall, who, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he says, the words that you and I speak. So knowing that we speak 7,000 words a day on average, we must be very careful as to what comes out of our mouth. That's why James said, be slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to speak. So we must choose our words very wisely. And our words not only affect us, but our words can affect our children. Your children at home and even your adult children. Words cre create reality. Words create atmosphere. And our children, and not only our children here that you have in your home, but I'm talking about children that we are allowed to pour life into, get to pour words into. You know, they speak life or they speak death into that child. Once again, words can heal. Words can make sick. They can bless or they can curse. But they will do something. You know, the words that, that you hear in the morning can linger all day with you. Sometimes they can linger for weeks, months, and even lifetimes. So, when a... problem with words and the words we say, they become habit way too often. They become our vocabulary. See, but faith has a language, and that's the language of love. Amen. And by our words, we can rob our spouse or our children the opportunity to, to excel. And so we must very choose very carefully the words that we speak over our children, over our spouse. And we also, as parents, we must be very careful 
as to who we let speak into our children's life. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's bad, there's, uh, and I get it, parents. I, I'm, I'm thankful that my kids are out of graduating. I thank God I didn't have to deal with that. But, you know, there's, there's things being spoken today. Today, you would not believe, well, you might. Probably it's probably not hard to believe as you think. But you would be awestruck by the number of young people that we minister to today that really don't know if they're a boy or a girl. They don't know. They're confused. That's because somebody spoke words over their life. Somebody spoke something into their life. You don't be surprised how many of them think they're ugly. Well, but somebody spoke that over them. They heard that somewhere. Now, whether it come through the loud mouth of an individual... Or the devil whispered that in their ear. They believe it. And so words can either make us or break us. And as parents, we must be very careful of the words that we speak. And I will say this. This is what Jesus said. How do we make someone stumble? Jesus said, if you cause one of these little ones to stumble that believe in me, Jesus said it would be better if a millstone was tied about your neck and you throw it into the depths of the sea. That's pretty harsh language, but that's what Jesus said would have been better or should be happened to you if you cause a little one to stumble that believes in me. We should never discourage young people in the house of God. We should encourage them. You know, I found out today, and I've already addressed it, and if I have to address it further, I will. Because when you start messing with these kids, it really gets my tail feathers ruffled. And, um, you know, I seem pretty peaceable and pretty easy going, but that's just one area that I'll fight. And I'll fight as much as I have to, as far as I have to go. But I found out today that one of the teachers at one of the schools was discouraging the kids from going to release time. Tell them they didn't need to go, and they shouldn't go, they should stay. They didn't, that's, not their, that's not their business. That's not words they should be speaking to those kids' life. Teach them the subject that you're paid to do and let somebody else deal Let the parents decide whether they need to go or not. Somebody say amen. So we got to think about what we say in the morning before we leave the house. Because you're setting an atmosphere for your spouse and your children, at least for that day. And as I say many times, these words linger and linger for a lifetime. Learn to make words work for you. Learn to feel, uh, speak words that speak power, that speak life, that speak joy. You must be very careful because words, Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. And the thing about words, we can apologize. When we realize what we said was wrong, we can apologize. But many times the hurt, the damage is already done. We must realize that our words set an atmosphere in our home, our job, and even the church. When words are spoken over a church about how they don't like this singing, they don't like that singing, and they don't like this style of preaching, and I don't think they should do this, and I don't, you're, you're, speaking, uh, you're speaking words against the growth of that body. There was a man that... Uh, Left a very religious uh, organization. Well, he left Amish. I'll just say what he left. And uh, by, his, by the words of his own wife, I think he visited 29 different churches in one year. 30, 29, 30. Different churches in one year. You think about that. That's a lot of churches in one year. And found fault with every single one of them. Well, of course you did. There's people there. And where you got people, you got problems. But you don't throw the baby out the bathwater. Instead of speaking harsh about the church, it's just like a Peggy is fixing to go on Demaeus Wall. Right? That's right. 
And I told Peggy, and I tell everybody that goes, eat the hay, spit out the sticks. See what's positive. Because there will be negative. There will be a negative in anything you go to like that. Whether it be a women's retreat, men's retreat, mass walk, whatever. You, there's, there's things that you're not going to see eye to eye. So, you know, if you don't, just eat the hay, spit out the sticks, and enjoy the hay. Amen? We're trying to always cause disruption. Amen? You know, because that creates atmosphere. And when you come in here, and, and, you know, thank God we don't have a lot of that here. But I've been to churches, and, and there's, you know, I know a lot of people wonder, I wonder, why they don't, I wonder why they don't take prayer requests for service. I'll tell you why. Because, my God, I've been in churches where they, they do that, and if you wasn't depressed when you got there, you depressed the time they got done with all the prayer requests. Amen. Or I wonder why they don't do testimony services there. Well, I can tell you why. Because I've heard too many testimonies. It was giving the devil more glory than it was God. Oh, the devil's been all over me all week, church. Pray for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. See, that creates the atmosphere. Amen. I ain't interested in what the devil's doing. I already know what he's trying to do. I'm interested in what God's doing. Let's talk about him. Amen. Because when you talk about him, things change. Amen. So, you got to learn to grow your family and your house strong. Quit talking about how bad things are at your house. Quit talking about how that your, your spouse or your husband or your children, they do this and then Listen, they may not do things exactly like you. Okay? Each, each, each person is not on the same level of spiritual maturity as the next. Amen? Well, I'll give you a prime example. There's a set of twins come, coming to release time. They're identical. They're, I mean, they are identical twins. The only way I can tell them apart I, is when I first met them, I tried to find something that was different. And I noticed one of them had a scar right here on her eye, right here on her, between her eyes. And I thought, that's the only way. If I don't see that scar, I'm not going to be able to tell these apart. Now, since the last, since over summer, and that's amazing how quick kids can grow, one of them's grown about, I don't know, a good four or five inches taller than the other one. So now I can pick them out by the height. So we don't all grow the same maturity at the same time. So maybe if, if your spouse, there's something you don't believe, and, and yes, it may even be wrong. But I'm going to assure you this, you're not going to accomplish much by hounding them all the time about what you think is right and what you think is wrong. Amen? You love them. You love them, you pray for them, and you speak words of life over them. Amen? Because the, I, I assure you, the more you hound them, many times it does the right opposite. It turns them away from God and instead of turning them to, them to God. One of my spiritual fathers, and uh, his, his mother, he told me, he said, I got to where I couldn't even stand to go to my mama's house. Because the minute I hit the door, even though she was right, he said, the minute I, the minute I walked through the door, she'd start about how I need to, Give my life to Jesus, and even though she was right. But he said, for years it made me not to even want to go around her, and it definitely didn't make me want to go to church. Until one day somebody spoke to him about the love of God. See, a lot of times in our zeal and wanting everybody to come up to where we are, we push them down. But when we, it's the love of God. It's the love, it's not telling people how sorry they are. You know, when I go to jail, I hardly ever tell them about how sorry they are. They already know it. You don't got to tell somebody a sinner that he's a sinner. Most of them already know it. Now, they might not know the severity of their sin. They might not even know the repercussions of their sin, but they know. How do I know that? Because I've heard two of them say, well, I know I could do better. Well, I know I should be doing better. Well, if you know it, do it. Why aren't you doing it? So, but you, when you share with them the love of God, it's the love of God, the Bible says, that draws men to repentance. So and see, a lot of times we just need to get in people's lives and love them. Amen? And speak words of life over them. And quit telling them, you know, I mean, I I've, I've, know I have. And like I say, I'm very cautious of what I don't compromise on sin. You die in sin, you're going to go to hell. That's, I mean, that's as plain as it, the Scripture puts it. And that's as plain as I can put it. But at the same time, I don't need to go out here and tell every drunk 
how sorry they are for drinking. They probably already know, and most of them want to quit. We need to show them out, a way out instead of tell them, you know, what they need to do. Let's show them how they can. So quit, you've got to be careful about what you, especially your spouse, because you don't grow the same maturity. There's different degrees, right? And so we meet them where they are, or vice versa. And we grow from there. But I assure you, when you speak words of condemning words, then they're going to feel condemned, and they're going to give up and say, what's the use? I can't live this. So you just turn them away. Love them. Encourage them. Amen? You, you may, maybe you can't participate in what some of the stuff they do. Maybe you can't watch some of the shows they watch. But you can't go around condemning them and using harsh words, trying to bow, you know, beat them with your words to get them convinced you're right and they're wrong. You love them. Amen. So in our tongue, will speak health or disease in our body. Now, if you've ever been visited somebody who's sick, you'll know real quick because that's all they talk about is how sick they are. Amen. They'll tell you all about their sickness. They'll tell you about how bad it is, and they'll tell you well, everything the doctor said. I'm talking about believers. Now, the world, of course, that's what they're going to talk, even though I've seen heathens talk about God healing them more than sometimes I have believers. The problem is many believers don't believe that God heals no more. Well, those words create life. That's all fine and well if you want to teach it till the day you get sick. Then you might want to change your tune. You might want to change what you're hearing. Faith comes by hearing. You're going to have faith in what you're hearing. Amen. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Proverbs 12 and 18 says, There, there is that speaketh life, the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. If you're going to have health, you're going to have to learn to watch your words. Amen. But the problem is, you and I live in a fallen world among fallen people, and we've been trained to speak, to think, and to speak negative our whole life. That's all we've known. Amen. So, for an example, this is an old example. I'm going to have to come up with a better one because we don't, most, most, especially young people, they don't even have a clue. But, you know, you see when you'd go to a, Clothing store, or shoe store, hardware store, whatever, you know. And, and even some today, hardware store, some of your smaller ones. But as soon as you'd walk through the door, they'd say, can I help you find something? And you'd say, no, I don't need no help. You lying dog, you did too. You didn't know where it was at. Well, unless you went there and bought it before, you didn't have a clue where it was. You need somebody. But we've been automatically trained to say, no, I'm fine. I don't need no help. And we've been trained to speak all kinds of things negatively. Amen. Oh, we watched Hee Haw, Bloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. We watched all that junk, and now that's how we think things are. You know, when I, when I, when I first got, a, got to hearing about, you know, what you have, what serve you say, man, I tell you what, I, I began to flee from people that was negative. I didn't want that, I didn't want that in my life. I didn't want to be around those people. And my wife will tell you, I went to, we'd, we'd get invited to these par, uh, uh, pastor conferences. I tell her, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. I can't, I can't deal with it. All I hear is how bad things are, how negative things are, and how hard a time they're having. I said, I can't deal with it. I can't. I hate it that they're going through things. I hate that things are tough. But I can't, I can't hear that. I can't. I'm not going to be around it, and I'm not going to be a part of it. And that's all I heard. And, you know, and I understand struggles can be hard. I get that. And I understand it's okay to share. But when that's all you got to say, and, that's, and it's all, I'm thinking, dear God, surely it can't be that bad everywhere. And so I was like, I just don't even go around. I don't go to family reunions for that reason. I don't want to hear all that negative talk. I don't want them to tell me, well, you better go get your heart checked. My God, you know, this one died of a heart attack, and this one died of a heart attack, and this one died, and your dad, and your, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm just going to get stay away from it. Amen? When you start talking negative and you see me walk off, now you know why. And I've had people say, well, he just walked off and I was talking to him. Well, that's true. I did. I didn't want to hear it. 
and I'm not going to. Amen. You say, well, that's being rude. Well, you can say what you want, but I'm, I'm, I, prote- I have a right to protect what goes into my spirit. Amen. So, Proverbs 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So there it is. You, you got to watch who you let and speak into your life. Amen. Because what's the opposite of that? Curse is the man. Curse is the man that walks in the way of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And Romans 12, 1, very familiar scriptures, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of your God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Once again, we, have, we were born into a fallen world, born to fallen parents, and now your parents could have been Christians, but still you are in a fallen world with negativity, and all you heard all your whole life was negativity, 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 and, and it's hard. you got to renew your mind to the Word of God. That's the only way you're going to get this thinking process and what comes out of your mouth straightened out. Years ago, I was doing a termite job for this guy, and he was, he was, he was I, don't, I don't know how old he was. I'm going to guess in his 40s. Never been married. Lived with his parents his whole life. Never been married. And uh, he said, yeah, my dad died of cancer. My mom died of cancer. And I'm probably sitting here eating with myself. And I thought, well, dear God, you probably are. If you ain't, you just, it's on its way now. It's on its way. You, you got to be careful. Even if you say something in anger, you got to be, you got to learn. The Bible, you got to put a safeguard on your lips. And you, you, listen, you say, well, I can't, that's just the way I am. I just say what's on my mind. Get your mind renewed. Well, that's just the way we are. That's how my, we, we just like that. We. Get your mind renewed, and you can watch what comes out. I've told people for years, you want to know what's in your heart? This one's coming out of your mouth. Get your tape recorder and record yourself for a day. You'd be surprised out of those 7,000 words how many times it's negativity. Amen. Get your mind renewed by the Word of God. You don't think like the world because, as I said, it thinks negative. That's all it knows is negativity. The, the, the world system is based on the enemy, based on sin, destruction, failure, defeat, lack. That's what it's built upon, and that's where these negative thoughts that have to be retrained by the Word of God. When you think defeat, when you think failure, you're thinking just like the world. Get your mind renewed to the B-I-B-L-E. Think in line with God's word. Now listen, I, you know, I got to get back to this. I don't know how I many because this is a, I don't remember. And we, we got several different generations um, represented here tonight. But I, I'd be safe to say that in Dan and Dole's generation, I don't, I bet they never met somebody. And, they, and both of them probably tra- have traveled the world. I bet you they could probably count on one hand of the number of people they met that didn't know if they was a male or female. Did you ever even meet anybody? See? And then, you know, then you got my generation. I never met nobody that didn't know. Never did. And now you got a, you got a generation coming up now that they're being told you, you don't really know. You, you got to you try it out. See which one you like. This ain't Baskin-Robbins. We ain't got 31 flavors. You, watch, you are what you are. Amen? My Lord, there ain't but two genders. Now, I've said this before. If the LGBT is so in the being equality, why they ain't, why there's no S for straight people? Why they leave us out? See, it's not about, it's about an agenda. The enemy wants these young people. He wants your children and when you allow them, and I'm going to tell you something. 
All this woke culture and everything coming on, it's, they're hearing it by words. Words are being spoken. And now, they're, I mean, every cartoon, I'm, I'm thinking, why in the world do I got to see two gay, gay men or two lesbians to, to know if I'm going to go buy Doritos or not? Just tell me about the Doritos. Tell me where I can. I don't need to see all that junk. I don't need to see a half-naked woman to make me go want to buy a cheeseburger. Matter of fact, it's going to turn me off. I'm not going to support that junk. But our kids are bombarded, bombarded, bombarded constantly. They're hearing words. They're hearing words. And once again, I like to say most people here, your, your kids are not at home. They're done adults, and, of course, they're going to make their own decision. But i tell you this, while you're home, I'd be very careful. Mom, Dad, you can say no, you're not talking to that person. No, you're not having that on your phone. No, you're not going here. Well, I don't want to miss out on anything. I'm going to tell you something. There's some things they need to miss out on. Amen. I wish my mom had been, you know, of course, when I was a teenager, my mom was dealing with her own crisis, and whatever I did, that was just one less thing she had to fool with. But be careful. Watch what you say. Not what you say, but watch what you let other people say into your kids' lives. Because I'm telling you, there's words being constantly spoken. I mean, my little pony, for crying out loud. Well, they didn't turn them into the gays or queers. Well, you ain't supposed to. Why not? Quit, quit, quit trying to make room and tiptoe around this mess, and let's call it what it is. Amen? That's the problem. We've been, we, we got, we, when we speak words, we should be speaking life. Amen? Not, to, not condemning these people, but standing on the Word of God. See, the, this world is, is no nothing about, all this world is wrapped in is spiritual death. That's all it knows is spiritual death. But Jesus came to give life. And he spoke life by his words. What, when he went up to Lazarus' tomb, what did he do? He didn't go in there and touch him. He didn't come in there and pull him out. He sent his word in there said, come out. He sent his word and healed them. His word, he spoke. God spoke the world into existence. Amen. Your words can create. Now, we don't have created power. I know people, I get sick of hearing that, thinking that, I don't think that. Now, there may be some people that believe that, but I'm not one. I can't create universe. I can't create the earth, but I can create an atmosphere in my home. Amen. I can create an atmosphere in this church. I can create an atmosphere in my body. Can you say amen? I can have whatsoever I say. You know, it's the things we say. I, this happened the other night. I was, we and Minerva was parked somewhere sitting in the car, and this woman pulled in beside us, and she, I had my window down a little bit, and she got out, and I said something to Minerva, and she jumped, and she turned around and saw me sitting there. She said, you scared me to death. I've heard, And this one I like. Another cl classic. You scared me half to death. So if that happens twice, what happens? If you get scared to death twice, half to death. We got to be careful. And we don't even, we've, so we've heard that so much, we don't even think, we probably said ourselves and don't even realize it. Well, that scared me to death. Well, you're going to be the death of me. I saw somebody say that the other day about their uh, newborn, first child they had, and he's had some complications, you know, we're taking formula, this, that, and other. And they said, this, this baby's going to be the death of me. And I'm like, oh, Lord, don't, don't, don't go there. Well, this is, this is going to be the, this going to take me out. This, this, I, I've made it through other things, but this will be the one to take me out. Never say, I'm afraid. Never say, they scare me to death. And like I say, I don't got to be preaching. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. But I'll tell you this. Uh, it behooves me. It behooves me why anybody that's a Christian would want to go participate in all this demonic mess going on this time of year. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. I don't know. How, I don't really. I don't know how you can profess Christ. It's it's a lack of understanding. Many times I know there's many people that are saved that they just have got their understanding, the revelation. But a lot of times it's because they don't want to hear it. Because once you hear the truth, then you're responsible for it. First time I heard about it, it didn't take me long to figure it out. And I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, I thought it was innocent. I thought, oh, you know, it's innocent kids. Go get candy. No big deal. Blah, blah, blah. But when I heard the truth, it didn't take me long to decide what I was going to do. I'm out. 
I'm out of here. I'm done with this. I'm breaking ties. And, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of things we do that, you know, once you know the truth, you're responsible for it. You can't play, well, I didn't know. So we got to be careful. And, you know, and, oh, Lord, I... If, if you're tempted to be afraid, and there's, you know, there's things that can make us afraid. But you've got to speak to it. Fear, I resist you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If doubt comes, you resist it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You speak to it. You speak to it. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Well, you, if you're saying something, you're speaking words. Right? It ain't like the country song, you say nothing. Without, I don't know, I don't even know how it goes, but something like that. You say it best when you say nothing at all. Yeah, something like that. We, you and I, are products of our words. We are products. Did you ever, did, I mean, do you think about our health as a result of our tongue? The tongue of the wise is health. So we shouldn't talk about sickness. We should talk about health. The tongue of the wise is health. So we should talk health, healing, deliverance. Never talk about disease. Talk about health. Never talk about failure. Talk about success. Never talk about defeat. Always talk about victory. Hallelujah. Can say amen. Like I say, quit talking about what the devil's done. Quit talking about it. I mean, if you need somebody to pray with you, fine. Get with that person. Let them pray with you. Well, don't go talking everywhere about what the devil's doing. Amen. Talk about what God's doing. I don't want to give him no credit. You know, if you feel like you're alone, what did Jesus say? I will be with you always. I believe that's success. You think about this. The God that created heaven and earth is with you. He's with you, and he abides within you. What greater success can you have than that? Eight, Romans 8 and 31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? Well, nothing. And he is for us. Can you say amen? And I've heard people say, Well, I don't know if God's hearing me. I don't know if it's God's will. Well, I, I don't know. I tried that Christianity stuff. I tried. I've tried. No, you didn't. You went through emotions. You went through a, a, a thing. If God be for us, who can be against us? And 1 John 4 and 4 says, Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I don't care what you and I face, the greater one lives inside of us. Can you say amen? Now, you know, I was delivered from smoking, supernaturally delivered from smoking. I was supernaturally delivered from alcohol and drugs, supernaturally. No detox, no rehab, nothing. And I'm not knocking, I'm, and I've seen people get delivered gradually. Amen? But thank God they got delivered. I know people who went to church six months to a year, still drinking, be drunk the night before, but they kept coming. They kept coming. I was telling Brian, I think, uh, Sunday morning, I, Alan's having the tent revival, and he's asking me to preach. I said, well, I hope he knows what he's got himself into with me asking me. Because I've preached two tent revivals in my life, two nights, and both times devils manifested, both times. I don't brag about that. I hope they don't. I don't like, you know, we deal with them, but it ain't something I look forward to. Amen. But when they do, we deal with them. And, but one of them, um, we, they was having one in KC, and the pastor asked me to come down. And uh, this guy, he started trying to fight everybody. And they're in the tent trying to fight the pastor. And, and uh, I, you know, and it was over. And he said, the pastor said, oh, you need to come back and talk to this guy. I, I don't know. I believe he's drunk. I believe he's demon-possessed. I said, well, okay. So I go back there and where he's at, I stick my hand out from him. And he jumps back and starts running backwards from me. And uh, so I just, okay, I thought, well, I'll just start talking to him. Got to talking to him, and I, and I wasn't going to let him drive home, man. He was dangerous, man. He could, I mean, he was stupidly drunk. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to drive you home. And um, 
And I was thinking, yeah, and watch this devil manifest while I'm driving him home. And, and, you know, all these thoughts start running through your head. And, and so uh, he takes me down this back alley. He said, well, I don't know where I'm parked. I said, well, let's go find your truck. I'm walking down this dark alley with this demon-possessed man. And he said, oh, I think that's my truck right there. And I said, no, I don't think that's your truck. Because the reason I knew it wasn't his truck because it had weeds growing through the bed of the truck. So I knew that wasn't his truck. So anyway, he finds his truck. And on his way home, he, he's talking back in his right mind. And he said, you know, he said, do you, you believe I could be demon-possessed? And I said, well, yeah, it's possible. He said, because my wife tells me sometimes I talk in a strange language. And I don't even know I've done it. I said, yeah, sounds, sounds very, very possible. So I prayed for him, prayed for him to be delivered. And I'd like to tell you he was supernatural. But the thing about it, he started going to church. The next Sunday he was in church. He went two years, drunk every day, but he kept going and he kept hearing the word. And today that man don't drink. And matter of fact, he goes to, he, he's a very gifted musician. He goes to different churches helping them, helping them out with their music ministry. I'm telling you, the word of God works. Can you say Amen. So we don't condemn, you know, it burns me up. I don't like that. People say, well, you know, they're coming to church and they're still drinking. Well, they're coming to church. They're still. you got to give people time for grace. Amen. Give the word time to work, all right? You don't plant a seed today and get a harvest tomorrow. Now, thank God, I thank God I was set free supernaturally. But not everybody gets that way. Can you say amen? So we got to, and so, you know, people, like I said, I was set free from smoking and drinking supernaturally. And we like to talk about how we you know give God praise and how you know we set ourselves here on a spiritual high because we were set free. But I tell you what, the church, a lot of the church needs to be set free from worry and sin, sin, sin of worry and doubt and unbelief. Can you say amen? They say I don't smoke. I'm delivered. I was delivered from alcohol. But then they talk about how they're worrying about this and worrying about that and afraid of this and afraid of that. And I, and you you don't gotta hear it from me. Go talk to any medical doctor. They'll tell you where he will kill you. It'll kill you eventually. And where he is brought on by what you hear. Amen. You know, a lot of people end up in mental institutions just simply because of worry. It becomes a fear, it becomes a phobia. Today, Kathy was talking about phobias. And, and you, you think about how in the world could somebody be afraid of some of the things people are afraid of? They have phobias. It's because they've heard words. They've listened to the enemy. And he's put a fear on them. It's a spirit. We know that fear is a spirit, right? But worry, we worry about things. We worry about tomorrow. We worry about things we're going to face. And I was just sharing with Rachel. I said, you know, I went through a time where I was, you know, I was worried about certain things. Just know that it was going to happen this way. Just know that it was going to be just like my mind was telling me. It didn't even happen. Never even had to deal with it. And so where he said, I, I ain't telling you something I don't know something about. I've been there. Amen. But I know what it's like to live in peace as well. Amen. So the greater one lives in us. Amen. The greater one lives in you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God resides within you. Can you say amen? So... If, if God lives in us and he's for us and who can be against us, what, what do we got to worry about? Amen. Now, as we know, God, uh, the, the devil is the God of this world. You got to remember you're in this world, but you, you belong to another kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. And so the greater one, he's greater than sickness, he's greater than sin, he's greater than disease, he's greater than depression, he's greater than fear and worry, doubt and unbelief. He is greater. Amen. The name of Jesus, that's his name, that's the name of the greater one. Where God highly exalted him and has given him a name that's above every name. Kathy, what was the name of that phobia? The last one. Yes, I do. See, fear is already coming on her. It's about 28. I don't know. I didn't count. I'm just there for the It's probably about 30 letters long. More letters in the alphabet, I believe. Amen. 
That's one word. And that's the fear of long words. That's the fear of long words. Even as big as that word is, how many letters did you think? Just real quick. There's still a name higher, and that's the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd say it's probably easily close to 30 letters the way it looks. So no matter what the world or the devil puts on it, or mankind puts on it, there's a name. The name of the greater one that lives in you, his name is Jesus. And his name is higher than every name. Can you say amen? He's higher than your situation. He's higher than your fear. He's higher than your pain. He's higher than anything that you and I'll face. Yes, we'll think, think, face things. But thank God we're going to go through them with the greater one leading us out. Can you say amen? There's trouble in this world and probably more coming. Can you say amen? But it really doesn't matter. Now listen, I'm not, listen, you know me well enough to know that I'm not one to say, well, you know, there's people say, well, I, you know, ain't no sense of me voting, it don't matter. Yeah, it does vote matter. You, you're right. You, you're, you've given this opportunity. You live in a land where you have an opportunity to decide who rules and reigns over our government. So it does make a difference. So, but no matter what happens, no matter what this president does, or this president, I'm, and I'm taking this one, I'm talking about any of them, no matter who's in the office, what they do or don't do, it's really not, it doesn't affect the kingdom of God. It doesn't affect the greater one. Can you say amen? 35 letters. I knew it was a bunch. But even that, the name of Jesus, I said, is higher. So what are you saying? Very familiar scriptures I'm going to read to you, but faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, and add hearing, and hearing, and you keep hearing. Amen. Proverbs 8, 20, 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 21 and 23. Whoever, whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Matthew 12, 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Mark eleven twenty three again. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he, he shall say, sh shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Hebrews 4 and 14. Seeing then... We have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. Translated from the Greek, that is confession. Confession. Words are involved in your confession. You won't necessarily get the blessing of God just because you have faith. You won't necessarily get healed or baptized in the Holy Ghost just because you have faith. You won't necessarily get answers to your prayer just because you have faith. Most Christians think that they will, but sadly they're wrong. The Bible does not teach just to have faith. You've got to do something with your faith. Because Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, Thou, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe. There's a combination, believing and confessing. Believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Can you say amen? So not only you have to, your heart has something to do regarding salvation, but so does your mouth. Amen. So simply believing is, is half, half of it. But then you've got to confess. That's why, you know, many times... You know, when you see somebody get saved, you know, you encourage them to go tell someone. Well, that's great, but they need that confession that Jesus is Lord right there. Then send them out and tell them, let them tell somebody. Let them go tell the whole world because that's what they were called to do in that moment to go into the world and preach the gospel. Amen. So with the mouth, with the mouth confession is made unto, unto what? What do you have need of? Faith is always expressed by words. By faith, God created. Well, how did he do it? 
let there be. He spoke. Amen. Now, I'm not just talking about the words you speak in church. We can all fake it for a little while. I'm not just talking about the words when you pray. I'm talking about at least 7,000 words you speak a day. I know some people, I believe, speak more. Amen. I've been around some of them. I'm like, come on. I've had people, I've had, I've not had, sometimes I've not had conversation with people. I've just listened. Because you don't get a word in edgewise. I mean, the minute you're, and, oh my gosh, we're all probably thinking about the same person right now. Let's repent. Yeah, I'm, I got a witness of what y'all was thinking back there. Help us, Lord. I'm talking about these 7,000 words we speak daily. Life or death, what was spoken. And you can speak life for a while, but when you counteract it with death, it makes it null and void. Now, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And when you multiply two positives, it's a positive. When you multiply two negatives, it's a negative, right? Am I right? Tell me if I'm wrong. We got no mathematicians in here? Peggy, am I right? What, what, two negatives is a positive? Okay. Well, I know this for sure. A negative and a positive is what? A negative. So there you go. If you can have positive, positive, and then later have negative, well, there you go. That's a, and listen, that, that negative and positive is a natural law. Is it not? Two times two works. It'll always be four. It'll never be nothing else. Two times two is four. I have faith in that because I know that to be a fact. It's not going to change. Well, but now if I say, well, well maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, maybe two times two is, is three. Well, say that makes a negative. Well, I'm believing God. You know, I'm believing, you know, we're struggling right now financially, but, you know, I, I believe he's the God that should apply all my needs. He is Jehovah Jireh. You, you say that right here, bless God in church, and hallelujah, God's got this covered. And then you go out here, and somebody said, well, how you doing, Brother brother Jones? Ain't no Jones in here. Hey, Brother Jones, how you doing today? Ah, brother, rough right now, going through a rough patch. You know, I've been out of work because of COVID. Ain't got no unemployment check. I just I don't know how we're gonna pay our bills. Probably gonna have to look, probably gonna end up losing our car. May lose our house. I don't know what we're gonna do. Well, what happened that positive and that negative? What happens in the natural law? Gravity is a natural law. Seed going into the ground and coming up is a natural law. Well, there you go. So hold fast to your confession. Make sure we're saying the same thing over and over. Don't, when you speak doubt, then repent. Amen? So, just not the words you speak in church. It's the 7,000 words you speak during the day. Your words set boundaries on your life. Words you speak affect your spirit, your inner man. Amen? You, like I said, you want to locate where you are, listen to what you're saying. Amen? As I said, what defeats a lot of people is their double confession. And what did James say about a double confessing man? What did James say? A what? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and he should not what? Think that he should receive anything from the Lord. I sound like somebody who's talking in positive one minute and negative the next. Amen. Well, James put that in there for a reason, to be a help for us. So let's make sure we're holding right to our confession. And we do mess up, because you've got to remember, we've been trained to be negative our whole life. That's all we know. Negative talk, negative speech. Well, just, well, how you doing today? Ah, oh, man, you know, rough, just rough. Oh, just, you know, old body's just getting wore out and wear out. Ah, how you doing? Ah, you know, just, just barely making it. 
Oh, I'm doing all right, I guess. Could be worse. Yeah, it could be. But it could be better. Amen. Watch what you say. Fight the good fight of faith. And you fight it with your tongue. Amen. You fight it with your actions. And I tell you, sometimes you, the people that cause you the biggest fight of your faith were people you go to church with. Well, you know, brother, that's good you believe in God. But I know somebody had the exact same thing you got. And they died. But hope, hopefully that won't happen to you. I said, uh, here's a class right now. People... People put on Facebook. I don't think I put on Facebook I had the COVID. I knew better. People be typing death of you. Well, I hope you don't get it bad. Well, I hope yours is a light case. Well, I hope you don't end up in the hospital. Well, don't go to the hospital because once you go to the hospital, you're dead. You got to watch who you let. I know I've told this before. I know sometimes I sound like a broken record. But the day I got shot, when I was leaving the house, I said, Minerva, do not. Go around telling everybody I got shot. Because the next thing you know, they'll be praying me in the grave. Well, God, if it's your will, Lord, if it's your will, let him live. I don't need that amount of negativity in my life. Can you say amen? I need somebody to agree with me. Agree in faith. Help me fight the fight of faith. Can you say amen? So sometimes you've got to fight the fight of faith against your pastor, against the Sunday school teacher, against the deacons. Amen. Sometimes against your own spouse. Amen. But you keep fighting. You keep holding fast to your confession. I get up every morning while I'm brushing my teeth. I gotta, And you know, say, well, I don't believe in that old confession stuff. Well, okay, don't believe in it. Well, that sounds like what the world. The world stole that from the Bible. Amen. But I speak, I speak to my body every day. I just say what God already said about it. I don't say how that could be wrong to you. How could it be wrong saying what God already said? Amen. Because if you allow it, your body will do all kinds of silly stuff. Amen. Devil put all kinds of silly symptoms on you and have you convinced you're leaving and dying. Amen. So I just go ahead early in the morning and say, well, here, here, this, this is what the Word says. Listen here, this is what it says. I let myself hear it. Faith comes from hearing, does it not? Amen. So... And, 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 you know, we all get sometimes we're looking for somebody else to fight the fight of faith. I can't fight your fight of faith. Most of the time I'm busy fighting my own. Even if I could help you fight yours, I'm right in the middle of my battle. There's a fight you've got to fight yourself. And the, the best way I know to fight it is with the Word of God. Amen? And you and I will never, ever rise above what we hear. You'll never rise above. And, you know, that's, like I say, I, I mean, I love all, I don't care what brand they got over the door. I, I wish that all the signs would just fall off the church and myself. And, um, but, you know, if, you know, and I understand people don't agree. With, there's people in here that don't agree with what I believe. And that's okay. It don't mean, don't mean nothing. It just means you don't agree with me. doesn't mean I can't love you. doesn't mean I can't fellowship with you. But it, it grieves me when, you know, people... You know, they don't, they don't believe, they just don't, they don't believe the word will work for them. They just believe that whatever's handed to them, that's God's will. And, you know, we just hope for the best outcome. But if it don't, you know, get in the word of God. Speak life. Amen. Ain't there a song I'd like that now? Speak life, speak life. Well, there you go. Don't take it from me, take it from them then. Speak life. Because either you're, you're doing one or the other. You're either speaking life or you're speaking death. There is no middle ground. Amen. you either speaking fear or you speak speaking faith. There is no middle ground there. Amen. you either speaking health or you're speaking sickness. No middle ground there, really. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Worry can cause all kinds of effects. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Dole's, um, is what it your grandson, grandchild? Twenty, how old? Twenty what? Twenty-seven. Just got married this summer. Yeah. So let's pray for this. Pray for this widow and this family.